but uh, this this amazing conversation. It's only two and a half minutes uh, between the amazing Dave Filoni and Leslie Headland. Here we go. Whoops. And I and that sounds good. That does Let's sound do good. Let's do it. Tell me about the acolyte. I'm sorry. Just you asking me that question is making me cry. Is it? That's all right. Yeah. It is a big deal to a lot of people. It affects people in different ways. And this is your story. So what I was interested in examining were the Sith. <sighs> the master apprentice dynamic. If the apprentice is craving the master's power, mm. then at some point he must recruit his apprentice to overthrow the master. Yeah. And that is the acolyte. Right. Who trained you? You don't wake up <laughs> thinking you're evil or that you're the bad sure. guy, as explored by George and Anakin. Yeah, I don't think Anakin ever thinks he becomes evil. I, I agree, life, and I think know. a lot of the characters in the Acolyte have to convince themselves that they are... Doing the right thing. They're doing the right thing. This is the Clone Wars! Yeah, no kidding. Ahsoka was such an interesting character to me. When we started, we had it very much a shell shock moment for her or that she was out of her depth. And I'll never forget it. George watching it and saying, you guys are taking this a bit too seriously. <laughs> he went on to explain that, like, even at a young age, she's not off her depth for any of this. I had a similar experience with the character Jackie. There was a note from somebody that was, wouldn't she be scared on her first mission? And I remember you telling me about that story. Jedi training has to be valuable. It prepares them for the galaxy. Do or do not. Do or do not, there's no try. That's like, if you're trying, you're not actually doing it. I had to do that with Acolyte, like for sure. My agreement with myself was whenever it overwhelms you, that you're doing your dream. You just have to do it. Honestly, the times that I felt the most worried was not the special effects, the fighting choreography. It was the emotional stuff. These things that George understood about filmmaking, understood about iconography, are things we still try to tap into. It's the Western. It's the samurai film. It yeah. has to feel elevated, but it also has to feel like Star Wars. Basically, what George created, it's the North Star. What are you? Uh, <laughs> it's funny that she says George is All the right. North Star. Let me just say George that. comes out and says, I y'all don't know Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. It got yeah. lost somewhere. Here, here's the thing. Here's one thing that, that stuck out to me in this interview. It's it's the overuse of the word I or my. Uh, th this comes off so narcissistic. There's no humility yeah. here. Uh, I made this promise to myself. I, you know, I I put this into my story. Um, there's just no, no humility whatsoever uh, in this, uh, in Star Wars nowadays. Yeah. And and by the way, uh, this, the, this is the hands in which Star Wars now lay. So. Uh, and I love how she's hey. talking about, oh, I'm examining the Sith and the master apprentice dynamic that like it hasn't been done before and done in a in a way <laughs> it's just more creative and more awesome way countless times before, actually, in yeah. Darth Bane and, and mm -hmm. the, the whole old Republic era that has just been that is very familiar in fans minds. And she's just saying it like she's touting new territory or breaking new ground like you're just reformatting what previous creators have already done in a much better and more creative and entertaining way. And you're just like putting your own spin on it. But that's the thing. They, they don't acknowledge the EU. They, they don't acknowledge uh, the old Republic games. They don't uh, acknowledge anything that came before uh, Disney. They might not even know yeah, about they, it to be they honest. They pretend that it doesn't exist. We know it because, exists. well, because here's the thing. If they're, if, if, if Disney runs Star Wars like they run Marvel, they're probably telling them not to read or watch any of the, the EU stuff mm -hmm. because that's what they tell all the people that join Marvel. Don't read about your character. Don't read the comic books. Don't go back looking up your character, anything like that. Um, so it's like obvious, you know, they're probably telling them, don't worry about the old Republic. Don't worry about any of that stuff. And so these people really do think, why, you know, 
I watched Star Wars, and then I realized no one's ever talked about what the Sith are going through. No one's ever deconstructed <laughs> Star Wars. We've never, we've only, we've only ever seen Star Wars through the lens of a a young white man. We've never seen any other characters in Star Wars doing anything. I've been in arguments with people that are Disney Star Wars fans that don't know some of the basic, like popular characters from the EU. Don't know who Kyle Katarn is. You know, like you're like yeah. what? Like you know, they they don't know a lot of this stuff. They, you know, and the, so all of it is through the lens of what they have in front of them. And Disney Star Wars is a a shell of what Star Wars was with hardly any of the depth, any of that stuff. So I I don't I honestly don't think they know. I think they have no clue exactly what they're talking about or what the source material is of uh, and what they're drawing from. Yeah. Well, I'll say they they understand the narratives, but they don't understand the subtext. They don't understand yeah. what drove those narratives. You know, the, the idea that Anakin, Anakin didn't know he was evil. Well, Anakin turned into Darth Vader because he felt like the Jedi were holding him back. They felt like that at every turn, rather than becoming a great Jedi warrior, they they suppressed him. They they kept him from, from getting full training. You know, they kept him from becoming a full Jedi, you know, having to stay the Padawan of Obi-Wan. And it was the Emperor who was able to take that insecurity in a Anakin and then turn him ultimately into Darth Vader. Um, they just don't understand these, you know, human nature and how you can, uh, how you can insert that into the stories of the downfall of the great. And uh, you know, it's just all about the narratives, and that that's what is the problem with with Disney, Marvel, Star Wars. They don't understand subjects. They don't understand why people act the way they do. They just understand. It's all very surface it's level. Narrative. It's all very mm -hmm. surface level. Everything they've done with Star Wars is very surface level. And that's that's the main issue. And that's why it doesn't feel like Star Wars. It doesn't. It just they don't understand what George's vision was. Sad, man. It's really sad. It's pathetic. Yeah. All, all, all yeah. I can tell you is no one's going to buy these toys. I didn't even no, know that. No, I, have no, 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 I didn't even know there were toys available. And then I was like, "Are there really toys? I haven't seen any." And then I was like, "Oh yeah, they got toys out there. They're probably going to be on sale in a week because <laughs> nobody's yeah. going to." Well, be they got toys at Riva that they can't sell. So yeah. Uh... Yeah, there you go. There she oh, is. Alan oh, has one. <laughs> <laughs> I have my Riva. Hey, hey, and how much you pay for that? At, out of the dollar yeah, bin at was, Walmart. Yeah, it was the, it was the clearance clearance shelves at Target. Uh, I that I makes sense. What yeah, five bucks? No, I paid nine. I I was like afraid I wouldn't get one before that went to the garbage dump. So I needed, I needed to pick one up. Right you could have there. pulled it out of the garbage dump. It would have been just fine. Man. <laughs> All right. So I, okay, so we got to we got to wrap things up. Uh, I'll say this: we we'll get to the super chats in just a moment. But um, here here's the thing uh, that that I will have everyone think about when they watch the acolyte, especially this third episode. This. This third episode is going to be the lightning rod, and, and I can't wait for the world to see it. Wait, so but, wait, how many episodes drop tomorrow? There's, there's two drop tomorrow. So uh, next Tuesday, next week is the third. Okay, we gotta wait a whole week. All right. Yeah, we. It's it's not worth spoiling it anyway. It's worth just you watching it and just taking it in. Fair um, enough. But but what I would say is think about you know think about that moment that uh, that Return of the Jedi ended. Uh, think about that moment when Revenge of the Sith ed ended and, and how you felt about the Star Wars story that you had just seen in, in both of the three films. And then ask yourself the question, uh, does where Disney Star Wars is today, is that the natural progression and evolution of the Star Wars story that it brought us to this point? And and it's that question that I had to ask myself when when I finally declared after watching the third uh, episode of the acolyte that that star wars is dead to me um that i can't mm -hmm. you know i i'm no longer a fan of star wars and and i'm nice. done i mean i'm gonna have to watch the rest of it for for this but um it, it's star wars doesn't it has has passed me by you know i'm just an old guy in the senior citizen home and uh and star wars just is not for me anymore it's for uh it's for <laughs> i'll just say it the force is female. It's for women and it's for gay young men. And, uh, <laughs> and there you go. And, and and that's fine. You can make Star Wars for those things. You can make Star Wars for women. You can make Star Wars for uh, for the LGBT community. I just hope that you're budgeting accordingly. And I hope they have enough money to make it profitable. 